is Nyla with Jazzy Zebra Designs. I am going to teach you today how to do a basic applique. Uh, this is just two color applique, two fabric applique. When you purchase one of my designs, it'll come with a JPEG image that you can print out and it shows you the thread chart, it shows you the image, and then what stitches next. The things that you'll need to begin your applique is you need some good applique scissors. Smaller curved work really well. I'm going to teach you how to float, so you need to have your pins to pin it down to your stabilizer. I'm going to put it on a towel so you can, uh, it's easier to see, less bulky. You would need some water soluble stabilizer. You need cutaway stabilizer for the bottom. You need your fabrics ironed and ready to go. You need your design on your USB or however else you need to put, your, put the design to your machine. There's fabric that you need and you need to take your thread and match your thread to your fabrics that you're going to be using. In this design it calls for the black and the white and then there's the stripe on the on the bowling pin and then the, the holes on the ball, bowling ball. So we have four colors that we need. So you take and hoop your cutaway stabilizer in your hoop. Make sure it's good and tight. Put your towel in. Center it over the hoop where you want it. Pin it to this cutaway stabilizer. Use as many pins as you feel that you need to use. Pin it as close to the plastic rim of the hoop as you can. You want to stabilize it down tight because you don't want it to shift while it's stitching. Now to put it on your machine. Put your designs into your machine. Turn it on. Select your pattern. Send it to the unit. The first thing that's going to stitch out is going to be your outline for your first tack down for your first fabric. Put it on your machine. Make sure that it's not tucked up underneath itself. I've done that many times and stitched it down by accident. According to your chart, your first thing is going to be your outline for your bowling pin. So it needs to, I always match my thread to the fabric. On your file, it'll say blue and then red. It's always used what colors with the fabric. The red and the blue are just stops for your machine to know when to stop. This is going to be a little hard for you to see. Gently remove your hoop from your machine. Because the first step was white, it's a little harder to see, but there is white stitching here, and that's going to be your guide to where you put your fabric on top of. Gently put it back into your machine. Make sure it's not tucked under. Run step two.
gently remove your hoop from your machine again. We need to trim the fabric. This is where some good small scissors come in handy. You want to trim the fabric as close to the stitching as you can get without cutting the stitching or the towel. As you can see, it's been trimmed up. Gently put it back into your machine and it's ready to do the second fabric. Spread it out, make sure it's not tucked back up under. time for the second so match it to your second fabric which is this is going to be the outline of for the bowling ball so it'll be black again it will show you to tell you to do blue blue and then it'll tell you to do red when I make designs I use the blue and the red to tell you when to stop the tells the machine when to stop to break it up into steps otherwise it would just continuously stitch if it was all one color. Tell it to stitch step three. You don't have to take it off the machine to, to put the fabric back down. I'm just going to leave it on and make sure that my fabric covers the entire black outline. Top the stitch four and this is your tack down. Gently remove it from the machine to trim it. Trim as close as you can to the thread without cutting the thread or the towel or the fabric that you've already put down on the other design, on the other, in this case, the bowling pin. It doesn't have to be straight and beautiful because your satin stitching is going to cover it up. Return it to your hoop. This is where you will add your water soluble stabilizer. And I just gently lay mine over the top. If you'll see here, it's, you're on your step five. And step five is the bowling pin stripe. And in this case, I'm gonna make it red. So I would load the red. The water soluble stabilizer helps keep the threads 
and the satin stitching from sinking into the nap on the towels and gives a smoother satin stitch. It's a matter of preference. Not everybody likes to use the water soluble. so it doesn't break your needle later, tuck up under. As you can see, it's now ready for step six, and step six is going to be the holes on the bowling ball. So I want to change my third color. And in this case, I want them to show up on the black. So I'm going to do gray. and trim your tail. We're ready for step seven. As you see, step seven is the wide of the bowling pin. This is going to stitch the satin stitching around the folding pin, which will hold your fabric down. Stop your machine, cut your tail. If you don't cut your tail, it will wind up sometimes around your needle and cause you to break a needle. So I always recommend trimming your tail. It will go around this design and stitch down the underlay, which is the underlying stitch under the satin. Now the final step and the last step is step eight. And if you look at your chart here, your final step is the bowling ball. It's gonna put the satin stitch around the bowling ball. So in this case, I'm gonna use the black thread. And just start it in your machine. Trim your tail. And your 
it done. We're going to take it off the machine now. Gently pull your water soluble away. There's a couple of jump stitches it looks like on the bowling balls that didn't trim. Take your pins out. Remove it from your hoop. Trim as close to the stitches as you would like without cutting the towel. This is trimming your back side of your cutaway. There are two main types of stabilizer. There's the cutaway and the tear away. And the third is the sticky back. Some people prefer to use the sticky. I don't like it. It sticks to too much. If you're going to wash it, I recommend cutaway. If it's something that's a house item or something that's, you know, you're know you not going to throw in the washing machine, it's not going to get lots of washings, then you can use tear away. But for the most part, if you're going to wash it, always use cut away. It helps it hold its shape through multiple washings. Tear away has been known to ball up in washing. up underneath the designs. And that's how I trim mine out in your finished product. Nice rolling towel. This is Nyla with Jazzy Zebra Designs and I hope that you join me again for other videos and check out my website. Thank you.